Rajni, what's wrong? Tom, I have a script and I don't know what to do with it. Should I burn it? Feed it to my cat? You need some writer's group therapy. Hello and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers. Are you ready for your session? The doctors are in. Today we have special guest Travis Joe Dixon, writer, actor, and DP. Hello, hello. Hey. Hi, Travis. Hi, guys. So we actually go back a few years because we met at a casting director workshop facility that is now defunct. defunct. <laughs> and then uh, I think we worked together on one of your projects, and then you joined our writers group. So here you are now. Yes. So yeah. Yay. History. Yeah. So as a self producer, what have you been working on lately? Uh, I've been getting into a lot of these twenty four hour, forty eight hour, seventy two hour writing races that people do. So you're a sadist. Uh, it's actually been a, like I find that whenever I'm working on my own project and I've got all the time in the world to get it done, I find that is is a lot harder for me. But like where you're given a time limit, I find that everybody focuses a lot better, and you kind of cut out a lot of the stuff that you don't need. But that's just me. Yeah. Are you using the same team for each of these yeah, festivals? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's a buddy of mine that I met through um, just doing theater, and he's got his own kind of production company, and he puts these things together. And he has this group of people that he will just throw up a challenge, and whoever wants to throw up their name and what they'd like to do as far as like crew or write or act in it, and then people kind of get jobs assigned to them depending on you know what they did prior. Like, for example, if you crewed the last one, you, you know, if you're an actor, you get first dibs on the acting roles. But so far, I've really only wanted to help either write or do a DP on it. And I've edited a couple of them, too, now. So um, that's another, another skill that I'm, I'm trying to get much, much better at. Because I realize that not only – if you, you can have a bad writer, but if you've got a good editor, you can mm-hmm. kind of fix a lot of that in post, sort of. <laughs> Fix it in post. Fix it in post. Oh, no. exactly. Don't say that, please. <laughs> but what's interesting is I know that your background's primarily as an actor, so actor to writer's not a big jump, but actor to DP, how'd you get into that? Doing a lot of my own self-tapes. Um, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of self-tapes for uh, a website called Indie.com. They would put up these acting challenges where you had the opportunity to read an original script, a three-page original script, and do whatever take you wanted on it, and it, was, it would be for a certain casting director. And it got to where I just took these scripts and I would kind of start to interpret them, interpret them in ways that they maybe weren't meant to. And so it kind of gave me a different angle on things. And that kind of led to me shooting my, my own, like shooting one side of it as one character, and then I'd flip it around and I'd play the other character too. So I kind of started to turn these things into short films. And mm. that just led to me wanting to make more short films with you know, myself on either both sides of the camera or, on, you know, or behind the camera. So what do you feel like your, your ultimate goal is then? Obviously, nobody sets out to be a short film producer. <laughs> Um, let's see. I don't know. Uh, ultimately, it's it's the dream is always to be an actor, but to be able to possibly write something that I'm able to direct myself in as well, I think would be maybe like the ultimate goal to able be able to create a something that really really drives home your yourself as an artist from all angles, from the writing, from the directing, the producing. Uh, I think ultimately, I would like to do a feature film that really speaks to me as a, as a person, as a character, as to who I am. Do you have a genre you like the most? Oh, gosh, that's such a tough question. It's like that question when actors are asked, you know, do you prefer comedy or drama? And oh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, way, and the way I look at it, you know, drama is not that far from, from comedy. It's, it's, it's all a matter of timing, and it's all a matter of, situation and environment because you can take one comedy one situation drop it in the middle of you know 1940s nazi germany and it's you know something that's very heavy you take the same situation you drop it into the middle of a i don't know a bar mitzvah maybe i I guess those are kind of along the same lines but you get what i'm saying you know it could be the same situation but i don't know it's um i've been i've been 
writing a lot of things that tend to be more just very drama driven and they're not necessarily oh woe is me sorts of drama it's let me give you an example the last one we just wrote and we wrote it, we did it all in committee and I'll talk about that in a second but it was something that dealt with something that um is hoarding that's that's the the direction it ended up going and hmm. if you've ever known a hoarder or had anyone in your family that's a hoarder it's there's a lot of things that come up in terms of um, why is this person doing this? You know, is there is there regret? Is there a bad you know a decision that they made somewhere in their life once upon a time that forces them to now keep everything close to them for fear that they will lose some kind of connection to anything? So yeah, as far as a, as far as a genre goes, um, it's it's been more of this heavy heavy drama stuff that I've been really kind of gravitating toward. Wow. So in the last let's say eight months, how many of these? races have you done well we've done two so far we've got another one uh in two weeks oh my gosh wow so what from your first experience to now what were like the big lessons you learned that you're like oh my gosh i'm never doing that again or you're like oh this is good i'm gonna keep doing this oh well always when you get the first one we ever worked on it was that was there there were five of us as writers and i quickly came to learn if you if when you're in a, a committee like that writing if you don't have a mm-hmm. second to go back and reread scenes that tr- that where you're trying to connect certain themes and just just dialogue in general if you don't go back mm-hmm. and reread it out loud you don't kind of realize how certain things are sounding in your head they always make sense i'm sure that you write a line yeah. and you're like oh that's brilliant and then you get out there and you're like oh my god we never did a table read for this i never read it out loud this is this is not working at all how one person is interpreting it is completely different than how I wrote it. So mm-hmm. going back and really examining the theme that you want from the beginning and then writing from that point, instead of trying to, all right, what's scene one, line one? It's it's more about what's what's the overall theme from there? And also in terms of shooting, ugh, I forget a shot list. Like we tried to do shot lists and everything changes on the day, on the fly, when you're doing everything, because you never know quite where you're going to shoot, what you're going to shoot, what theme you're going to have to follow, because they give you prompts every time you start. At seven o'clock at night, they give you three different prompts, and they can all vary from themes to props to lines of dialogue. So you never quite know what you're going to get. So it's it's a lot of it's a lot of yes and, just like improv. Oh wow! And you have to have it edited by the end of the 24 or 48 hours as well, or do Correct. they give you extra time for editing? No, no, no. Oh. It's you have to you have to have everything edited, and it has to start uploading before that deadline. At uh, it's usually seven p.m. Whatever the following day or the next day, depending on how many days you have. It's usually seven o'clock. If you're in the queue to upload, you're fine. But if you hit oh if you gosh. hit upload one minute late, all that work is for nothing. Oh, that's a that's a that's a different different uh, requirement from when I've done this before. The forty eight hours. You had to actually physically deliver it, yeah. like on a disc or a flash well, drive. Well, and some of them do that. I started looking into other because this one um, was ended up being a premiere in Georgia for the seventy-two hours. So I flew out there and went to the premiere, and it was great. But I started looking up other states that do this sort of thing, and I'm from Oklahoma, and I thought, hey, maybe they're doing one. And coincidentally, the day I looked it up was a couple days ago. Um, uh, Sunday, and they were just wrapping up their 48 hour that night. Oh, and oh, no. according to their rules, you do, you have to hand it in on a flash drive or whatever medium you want. Some have actually turned in film. I don't know how they did that in 48 hours, but they actually were able to shoot it on film and get it to a medium where they could actually turn it into them. But you had to actually physically hand it in and you've got to factor that in as well. Oh yeah. God. Many, a, many a 48 hour film project has died in the render queue. Oh, for sure. And especially if you're our, our 72 hour film ended up being about 12 minutes and that render takes anywhere from, it can take an hour to I think like an hour and 45, depending on what size you're trying to, you know, what output you want. So yeah, I mean, you've got to be done hours before the deadline. And it's probably good that you've worked with the same team because at least you know each other's personalities. I can't imagine probably on your first project, you had a lot of unknown people in the room to you, right? Oh, for sure. Um, there, there were a handful of people I didn't know, but again, I'd known a lot of these people from doing theater with them. So we had done shows okay. together. I kind of knew their temperaments and the personalities, but the thing is I knew them as actors. A lot of them now were coming in to be 
grips and you know electric and because everyone has to pitch in um, we, we you know i needed somebody to come in and do scripty and someone had to do lighting and so it becomes it becomes a lot of hands-on and you don't quite know where people's skills lie until they're like oh oh i got that i, I know how to do that oh my word <laughs> that is that is a skill i salute you oh my gosh and we're getting better on everyone <laughs> Uh, so when you're not making films, uh, what are your what have been your some of your favorite films this year so far? You're gonna hate me. It seems like I only go to see one film a month, and it tends to be like one of the Marvel tent poles that they put out. So like Infinity Wars and Ant Man and the Wasp, and you know these aren't known for like you know these these wonderful tear dropping or you know scripts that they have, but they've you know it kind of just it's fun to sit back and just enjoy yourself. Um, those are fun but movies. Those are great. short. Yeah, no, they're fun movies. Yeah, and it tends to be a lot of the time. It's you know, it's the fall. You know, when Oscar season is is around the corner, where you really start seeing those those great movies and scripts. And I, I'm sure you guys know, you get the screeners and you get opportunities to go see talkbacks with these people. That's when the you know the really good films come out. But I like lately, I've been gravitating gravitating toward just some really good television. Um, I've been catching up on Better Call Saul. That's one that I just, I watch from a cinematography point of view. And if you've ever seen that, they have such interesting ways of telling a story or telling or foreshadowing yeah. things with that sort of stuff. And it's another, another way that I look at, I'm starting to look at films and, and just, you know, that sort of visual medium in general, like, People can not say a thing, but what story has been told just through the the angles and the colors that you've you picked. So what's up? Uh, what's up on the horizon for you? Well, we got yeah, we got the forty eight around the corner. Um, uh, as an actor, I've got uh, a feature film that's supposed to premiere um, here in LA. I think next month Ooh. called uh, The Riot Act. It had its premiere at uh, Cannes this year. Nice. Uh, last Congrats. month, so yeah, that's that's the next thing I'm trying to I'm trying to get out there. That's awesome. Um, I haven't even, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I, I hope I did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you were in in, is it can or is it con? I never know how you say it. I never know how to say it either. I'm like, okay, it, you know, for the longest time, it's got that s at the end, so I was like, cans. <laughs> you know, I didn't that's know. okay. I'm from the Midwest. I, I do no the same idea. thing. But if you've got a film there, that's that's pretty stellar. Yeah, it's the first time. That's congratulations. That's a, that's awesome. So if people want to find you online, how can they find you? I uh, am at Twitter at uh, Travis J. Dixon. And that's also my Instagram handle at Travis J. Dixon. And of course, you can find me on Facebook. And I've got a Facebook fan page. And I've also got a website, MrTravisDixon.com. Awesome. So for all of you out there listening, make sure to check out Travis Dixon online and maybe you'll catch one of his short films if you're in one of those 48 hour film festivals and we'll see you guys next week bye